The violent death of a child at the hands of a parent is hard to comprehend. And tonight, a community in Victoria is struggling to understand the events that occurred last night at a suburban sports ground outside Melbourne. An 11-year-old boy was killed by his father as his horrified schoolmates looked on. Today, 7.30 learned that police had been warned the family could be in danger. Louise Milligan reports. <laughs> Two people died here late yesterday. A father killed his son and police then killed him. The boy, Luke Batty, was only 11 years old. He had just finished training with the local under-12s team. Witness reports say they saw his father bash him over the head with a cricket bat. A shocked school community witnessed the entire unfolding tragedy. Luke's father was airlifted to hospital. In spite of emergency care, he died seven hours later. Police at the scene took statements from witnesses still in disbelief. just a normal cricket practice and most of the kids and parents had gone. Luke came to me and said, could I have a few more minutes with my dad? Because he doesn't see him very often. And I said, yeah, sure, that's OK. As the community tried to make sense of what happened, Luke's mother, Rosie Batty, faced the media. <laughs> what triggered this, I think, is a case of his dad having mental health issues was in a homelessness situation for many years. He was on a path of desperate... No one loved Luke more than Greg, his father. No one loved Luke more than me. We both loved him. We both... I did what I believe was in the best interests of Luke. Spread the Christmas joy. Hey, Mum, wishing you a Merry Christmas. He, um... He was a little boy in a growing body. Um... that felt pain and sadness and fear for his mum. And he always believed he would be safe with his dad. And he would have trusted Greg. This morning, staff and students at Luke's school were in shock. It was a challenge this morning to speak to all those grade six students. We brought them all together because they all knew him. And to be able to share the news, that was quite challenging to hear the children expressing their grief just in so many different ways. Hey guys, guess what? I can juggle lemons. Luke Batty was a well-known and liked boy. Probably his main interest would have been his sporting interests. He loved life and he used to throw himself into anything that came his way. Everyone was just really sad and distraught. Yeah. It was, everyone was really, has been really quiet for the whole day. Yeah. And, yeah. Hundreds of friends of the dead boy posted messages online, the first signs of the impact of this tragedy on other children, some of whom had witnessed his death. I would be most concerned about those children who have witnessed the event. Um, and I would also be thinking about the children who lost a friend um, and, you know, a classmate or um, a the boy from their street, their neighbourhood. So there are quite a few children involved in that. There will be children all across Australia potentially thinking, could this happen to me if they live in a situation where there is violence or threats? Karen Flanagan from Save the Children is acutely aware of the way stories like this one affect children across the country, already living in situations of domestic violence. Even though we will all go back to our normal work and jobs and lives by next week, even though we will have talked about this little boy, but people move on, unless it's directly affecting them. But child abuse affects so many children um, in our own communities in Australia, 
and yep, we have some support programs, we have laws and policies, but children still die. It is impossible to comprehend how a parent, embittered after a marriage breakdown, can respond by taking the life of their child. It becomes sometimes a vendetta against the other parent and a revenge thing. Now again, that's in some cases not all. Ultimately, the child gets used as a pawn and the love, and I mean, I've had parents say, um, I, I love my child, um, but I need to get him or her. So it's a really complicated thing. And in their mind, they do love their child and interesting, the, the children believe it. Rosie Batty successfully sought an intervention order against Luke's father last year. 7.30 has learned that after that, mid last year, a third party made a notification to the local sexual offences and child abuse team at Victoria Police. That team investigated but felt it could not be successfully prosecuted. They dropped the case. The staff in that unit are utterly devastated today. And what I want to share with you is, I mean, it's Vict family violence. And if anything comes out of this, I want it to be a lesson to everybody. Family violence happens to everybody, no matter how nice your house is, how intelligent you are. It happens to anyone and everyone. And this has been an 11-year battle. Louise Milligan reporting.